stuff you got to know before you go buying a house. Ryan, meth. I don't use it. No? <laughs> you know, I used to watch uh, uh, Breaking Bad uh, yeah. because I used to be actually in the meth remediation business. Right. Uh, I should probably go back a little bit in time. I, uh, 2008 happened. There wasn't a lot of real estate happening. I bet there's a lot of meth being used at that time. Yeah, uh, there was a lot of meth being used at the time, and they just barely passed some fresh new laws. And uh, so I got uh, certified as a meth remediator, not to remediate, but just to add to my home inspection resume and, you know, improve my, what I knew. Yeah. Then I started getting phone calls. Next thing I knew, I was remediating meth houses. Oh, boy. Um, and so this segment is uh, is about uh, what to know before you as a home buyer mm -hmm. potential home buyer what to know before you uh, go buy in homes that might have meth okay let me start off with a sh short funny story short and funny okay yeah so there was once a meth home we'll say lab okay and the police were going to do a raid on it okay and they got stacked up on the door, and they were ready to bust down the door. And the cop that was going to open the door, he puts his hand on the handle, and he looks back, and he waits for the call, the signal to go in. And before he was, be able, before he was able to give that signal, next thing he knew, he was waking up in the hospital. Oh. Okay. Uh, apparently, what happened was this cop grabbed the handle, and his hand was sweaty, and it was perspiring and it was it soaked up the meth that was on this handle and it knocked him out cold whoa and uh, they said next thing you know he woke up in the hospital and he wondered how he got there so that must have been really dang hot of meth in that uh, that home what, do uh, you have any more details on that, a city or anything? Um, I don't have any more details. That's from a realtor from yesterday. Interesting. Okay. Well, I've been in a number of meth homes, and I, uh, I failed to even get high. Yeah. Uh, you know, what's the point of doing a meth home if you don't get a little bit of freebie? <laughs> uh, no. The, the that doesn't leave your system... <laughs> Uh, the uh, there's there's a few signs to look for um, as as far as meth homes are concerned. Yeah, and um, you know I wrote an article on this. It's it's important to to make clear that you can have there's four signs. You can have all four. That doesn't mean it's a meth home. Yeah, but it does mean that you should be more wanting to test. I and agree. Having zero doesn't mean you don't have a meth home. But it means your probability and your need for testing might be reduced. Dwindled down a lot. Yeah. Now, when I wrote that article, I had another inspector who I don't know and I've never met. And, and he basically said, you should always test every home for meth. Mm. And I'm like, there's a lot of things. You know, there's lead rate on asbestos, carbon monoxide, mold termites, antivirus, meth. Electrical wiring, you know, there's a lot of things that you could pay extra for. Yeah. And then you'd be paying $2,000 to the home inspector. He'd be happy, but do we all have $2,000 for that? No, and it's... No. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so what we're here to do today is to basically give you, uh, the, the home buyer, some, some tools so that you know, okay, you know, uh, meth just went from here to here. Yeah. Uh, as far as my priority, and uh, yes, I do want to do that math test. So, um, what do you look for? Well, uh, you look for the guy sitting in your living room smoking meth. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a dead giveaway, wouldn't it? Uh, I actually <laughs> saw another home inspector doing a presentation to some realtors. He says, well, you look for, for beakers, and uh, you look for, you know, he named some chemicals. Meth heads are way too psychotic to allow that to be just entered. You know, you, they're not going to let you just see that. No, no, they're going to hide at all costs. One is cameras around the home because they're so mm -hmm. uh, schizo, let's say. Yeah, cameras. Um, 
I could tell a story about that one. It was a home in a very nice neighborhood where there was, uh, I think, 13 cameras around the home. Oh, yeah. And then they had a panic room where you could monitor all of them from. Uh, the upper end of the home was beautiful, if not a little bit gothic. And then the downstairs was a chemistry lab. Hmm. <laughs> chemistry lab. <laughs> yeah. You could actually sweep. Uh, they had these, uh, these, this table where it had holes in the middle. So if you wanted to just sweep stuff into the sewer quickly. Yeah. Um, it's Martha Stewart style when she cooks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and she doesn't cook good. Uh, <laughs> Probably not. So um, what I put in the, in the, um, in the, re in the article... Uh, was that there's four things. The first is you look for a home that's small, old, foreclosed apartment or a rental. Something where uh, the rent was either free or cheap. Yeah. And the best part of, uh, you know, the, the most desirable thing for a meth head is go live in grandma's basement. Yeah. And then it's free, and then you can basically do your labbing and, uh, and everything's profit. And I've heard many stories from realtors that say, well, the old grandma's lived here forever. This cannot be a meth lab. How is that possible? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, all she had to do is let in the teenage meth head, and, yeah. and that's how that's Even possible. Even for a week? I, uh, I ran into one scenario where some newlyweds let in a, uh, a, a guy who had a sob story, Yeah. and they lost everything. Their wedding photos, their everything. Um, they had maybe fifty dollars to their name, and the oh, my remediation bill was five thousand bucks. So, uh, but uh, and then I ran into one where it was just a a dude who listened to his car mechanic. The car mechanic had a sob story, so a dude let the guy live in the basement with his wife upstairs, and she says, "I'm afraid of him. I don't dare go down and confront him. He's already told me that he'll kill me if I do X, Y, or Z." And uh, so she's got her tormentor inside the house, opening the front door and looking at her every day. Um, free rent, that's item number one, or low rent, or just rent. Um, you know, I, I can pick one out from driving down the road. Now this isn't a hundred percent, okay, but this is another couple of signs to look for. Um, in the winter time, you mm -hmm. can tell lab when the snow is all melted off the one home, but not the others. Yeah, yeah, that uh, that can be an insulation thing. But what you're saying is the meth lab produces a lot of heat. A lot of heat, it does, and it'll go through the roof. <laughs> so, um, also you can drive down the road and you can look at the windows, and if you see blinds mm -hmm. that look like a toddler got to them and busted them all up. That goes into category two for me, a home that is trashed or one that used to be trashed yeah. and now it's spiffed up. Right. So meth heads, based on my experience, uh, based on the homes that I've been in, they're hard on houses. Very hard. And uh, it's, it's abused. Yeah, there's, there's crap everywhere. Uh, I've seen a number of homes where uh, maybe there's poop in the corner, but I guess that's another category. They, it's not dogs. Yeah, and yeah. sometimes, yeah, there was one where I could see it and I couldn't tell and I didn't want to find out. Right. Uh, but they're, they're trashed. And, and so then there was one where uh, my wife's uh, boyfriend from high school, he called me up. He'd just flipped a home. And um, there was some sort of a, an indication or a rumor, but he wanted me to go test this brand new gorgeous home that he'd done. Sure enough, it was, it was meth contaminated. And so the, the gorgeous cabinets, the brand new carpet, uh, the, the, the new beautiful everything. Needed to go. Had to go. Yeah. Um, I've heard of contractors doing that. So you walk into a, a new gorgeous sparkling home, and if, especially if you're me, you're going, oh, that's a problem. Oh, yeah. Because in many cases, the, uh, the flipper got a home that was trashed, and he made it gorgeous, but he didn't identify or eliminate the, the meth. Yeah. So, yeah, um, a home that's, that, is, that was trashed or that, uh, or that is trashed or was trashed, but now it's been spiffed up. Category three is a cat urine smell. And I asked, uh, I did one of those courses where, it's, uh, where you go through and, and, um, and it's a self-improvement course. And there was some 
colorful characters in there. One of them, I don't think he'd even mind if I used his name. I probably shouldn't anyway. Let's call him W. Okay. Um, but if there's a crime, he's done it twice. And if there's a criminal on the, on the lam, he knows where he is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a show I know. <laughs> um, so I asked him, I said, why do meth homes smell like urine? And he says, well, meth kind of sort of smells like urine, but quite often people just don't make it to the bathroom. Oh, wow. They're passed out. They're going to do their thing where they are, and when they get up, you know, they're, they've already gone. And, um, and they, don't, they don't clean up, so. Yeah, yeah. Cleaning up, not a thing. Yeah. With, uh, with the meth heads. So that's, uh, you know, that was instructive for me. Uh, another inspection that I did, um, they knew that this home was smelling bad like cat urine. Mm. And they wanted to cover that. They didn't want to me, the inspector, to, to figure out, hey, this is cat urine because it was a meth house. So they threw a cat in the house. Oh in this vacant property, and then they wanted me, the inspector, to assume, well, it smells like cat urine because there's a cat in here. Uh -huh. And that cat, I opened the door six inches, that cat was skinny, but it was gone. Uh, I don't know how many days it had been in there, but that cat was having no more of oh, me in that wow. house. wow, I bet it was high. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yes, yeah, high and starving. And, uh, and, and so that one tested positive, and we had to remediate that one. Uh, the last one is what I call signs of anger. Uh, damaged doors, damaged door frames, damaged sheetrock, uh, or new doors, door frames, and sheetrock. Yeah. And, um, you know, there was one where it was, um, it was the standard old door from, like, the 1970s, 1980s, hollow door. Oh, yeah. And, um, I, and I asked my the same buddy, W, why doors are so abused, and he says, well, you get off of your high, you know, and there's not new dope, you're angry. So doors and sheetrock tend to take a lot of abuse. Mm. Uh, dude, the guy that had been there that was the meth head, he, I, I asked, and he was about 155 pounds, and he had put his fist through both sides of the door, and I was there to be the uh, remediator on this one, and so I thought, well, i got to throw this door away anyway, so I'm going to see what I can do. And I, I weighed 220 at the time. Okay. And so I put a glove on and punched the door. Damaged my hand and only slightly damaged the front panel of that door. Oh, my good night. So, um, yeah, superhuman strength. Uh, and, you know, that's why the Nazis used it. I when they were that. Yeah. They come up, they're the ones that came up with it. And they actually uh, used it during the war to keep their soldiers going mm. good way to to, to do um, energy long term yeah good to know so uh, probably not something that we'd recommend for uh, for somebody long term no no all right um, so uh, you see the house you're the home buyer you're walking into a house it's trashed one of the things you're thinking is, we need a sample for meth. Yes. It's gorgeous, and it just got remodeled, and maybe it was originally built in 2005. It's too soon to remodel that house. Mm -hmm. why, was, why, does it have, why has it been remodeled? Was it trashed? Was it because it was a meth house? Right. These are the things that I would have you go, go through. All right. Um, should, we, uh, should we be done methanizing? Sure. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs>